Hello, TNA, and welcome to lesson nine of your GCSE level energy topic. Today's lesson is all about efficiency or how much of that useful energy that we talked about last week that we can actually use. So as every lesson starts, you need to make sure that your workspace is ready to go so that you have a pen and a feedback color pen. You have either your booklet printed out or you have a just regular paper you can write on. For this lesson, you will also need a calculator. So if you are using your phone as a calculator, put it on do not disturb mode. If you have another calculator, just put your phone completely away so it's not distracting you. And we'll start as always with our knowledge check. So pause the video, answer the questions and come back once you have the answers. And here are your answers for your knowledge check. Make sure you do have all of these correct answers written down. I have listed here all of the energy stores. You only need to have three of them, but do add in the rest with your feedback color pen. It will help refresh your mind as to what they are. The rest of them are from last lesson. So we have lubrication and insulation for reducing unwanted energy transfers. Metals have a high thermal conductivity. Non-metals such as wood have a low. We can add insulation to reduce the rate of cooling. And the thickness of the wall can affect the rate of cooling. So now we'll carry on with the actual new topic. So today, what is efficiency? Do remember if you are using just pe pen and paper, so without the booklet, anything that is highlighted or annotated should be written down in your booklet. So as we learned last lesson, in every energy transfer, there is wasted energy. As energy tr transfers from one form into another, some of that energy will be wasted and we can't use it all. So for example, in a car engine, not all of the chemical energy in, within the fuel is transferred into the kinetic store. Some is dissipated. Now the word dissipated means lost to the environment. So lost to the environment or the space around the object. So some is dissipated into the thermal store of the surroundings. Remember, if something is in the thermal store, what is that? That's right, it's hot. So the proportion of the total energy, total input energy transferred into useful energy is called the efficiency. So the proportion of total energy input transferred into useful energy is called efficiency. So if we're taking a proportion of something, it's the amount of something, and we usually, hopefully you remember, when we take a proportion, we divide. Or we split, split, be nice if I could spell, isn't it? Divide or split into Parts. So the proportion, how many parts of the whole are like that. So the efficiency of a system must always be less than one is another important thing that you should write down. This is because if it's greater than one, that means that we are creating energy from nothing. So if it's more than one, We create energy. Now, hopefully you can remember what says that we can't create or destroy energy. It's the law of what? Well done, the law of conservation of energy it says we can't do this. create energy. So the law of conservation of energy says we can't create energy. So this means the efficiency must always be less than one. So petrol engine in this car that we've talked about already transfers 
25 joules into the car's kinetic energy store. So the engine, we end up with 25 joules of kinetic energy, but it's taken 100 joules that's stored in the chemical energy store. That means we have a, an efficiency of 0.25 because we've turned 100 into 25. So we know some of that wasted energy was the heat. And also, try to think of which other forms of energy are also formed inside of an engine. Some of you have gotten sound. Well done. And if you actually burst an engine open, you'll see there's fire in there, and fire also produces light. So we have light and sound energy also coming off, but those are not useful forms of energy. So they are the wasted energy. So the efficiency is only not 0.25. So this is the equation we use. This is an equation that you will need to memorize. So take a minute and stop and memorize it. So. Amount of energy, what do we measure that in? We measure that in joules, as well as input energy, also joules. So it's energy out divided by energy in. We can also, a couple lessons ago, we talked about power. So efficiency can also be power out divided by power in. And what was our unit for power? That's right, it was the watt, was our unit for power. So, most of, any other time, I've also told you the unit for efficiency. Efficiency doesn't actually have any units because we're dividing joules divided by joules, it gives us no units. So efficiency doesn't have a unit. So unfortunately, we can't do this demo at the minute maybe once we're back in live lessons. So, as I said here, there is no unit for efficiency. So, as I said, it's the same quantity divided by itself, so joules divided by joules or watts divided by watts, the units actually cancel. It's always a decimal number less than one. It can also be calculated as a percentage. So the same way in math, you convert a number to a percentage, you multiply it by 100%. So the efficiency percentage is our energy in divided by energy out, sorry, energy out divided by energy in times 100%. Same with power, power out divided by power in times 100%. So if you are meant to do efficiency as a percentage, you need to use the percentage sign in the final answer, right? So if it asks you for efficiency and you used to write 25, that is incorrect. You either need to write not 0.25 or 25%. So pause the video. What is or what are the two equations to calculate efficiency? Write checkpoint and write your answer now. So here are the two equations. We have either useful energy output divided by energy input, that useful didn't need to be there, or we have our power output divided by power input. If you've added times 100% to the end of each of these or both, that is 100% okay, you can still have it correct. So make sure you have that written into your boxes if you don't already, correcting it with your feedback color pen. So now we have more maths questions. And as I've said before, the steps don't change, only the numbers do. So we have maths questions, word problem questions, as I've said before, the steps don't change, only the numbers do. So remember, step zero, or my first step, which you're not gonna get marks for, but we'll make the question easier, is what do you know?
what are you being asked? All right, then step two, write out the equation. Step three, put in the values, calculate the, calculate the answer. Usually this says with units. So I would like you to add the with units. So make sure you write down the four steps in your book, even if you remember them, to make sure you absolutely don't forget them. So in this question, step zero, what do you know? An engine does 150 joules of useful work. So this is the first thing we have. So this is our useful work with 5,000 joules of energy supplied to it. What is its efficiency? So we have our useful work, our energy supplied, and the efficiency. So efficiency, useful energy divided by energy input. So we plug in our numbers and calculate the answer. Because efficiency doesn't need units, we're okay the way it is. So if you think you can do these two questions on your own, I want you to pause the video now and come back with the answers. At any point, if you're not quite confident, keep watching for a little bit. Once you think you can do the rest of it, pause the video, give it a go. You can always come back and rewatch it, or you can always go forward and watch the answer to make sure you get it right. But try as much as you can without watching the video. So as I said, we start with step zero. What do we know what is being asked? So a light bulb radiates 20 joules of energy as light. So a light bulb, light, this is our useful energy. For every 100 joules of electrical energy supplied to it. So this is our energy input. We're being asked to calculate the efficiency. So the efficiency is what we don't know. So that's step zero. Step one, write out the equation. Our equation is efficiency... is equal to useful output divided by input. All right, I'm gonna shorten that down for efficiency's sake. So next step, plug in the numbers. We don't know our, our efficiency, so we're gonna do a question mark. Our useful output, our useful energy is 20 joules divided by 100 joules. So our efficiency is equal to 20 divided by 100, not 0.2. And do we need any units for our efficiency? No, we do not. So there are your three marks for that question. So now I would like everyone to pause the video, give this one here a go. And then once you have the answer, come back and green pen it. So how efficient is a cyclist who uses 200 joules of energy to produce 30 joules of useful energy? Again, start with, what do we know? We use 200 joules of energy. So this is our output. No, nope, this is our input because we're using that amount of energy to produce... 30 joules of useful energy. So this is our output. And how efficient. This is what the question is asking. So we start with, write down our equation. Efficiency is equal to useful output divided by input. So we plug in our numbers, our efficiency is equal to useful output is 30 joules divided by our input, 200 joules. We plug that into a calculator. We end up with our efficiency 
is equal to 0.15. And again, for efficiency, we don't need any units. So I'm just going to erase that there. So that is our efficiency. If you have written the efficiency as 15%, that is also completely fine. All right, it's either not 0.15 or 15%. If you, this, is, this one is very easy to check if you've put the numbers in the wrong order. So if you've, by chance, you've mislabeled it or you've forgotten which order it goes in, and you get to this point and you've gone 200 divided by 15, sorry, divided by 30. So 200 divided by 30, you end up with an answer of 6.66. And you go, wait, but I remember Miss Berker said that we couldn't have an efficiency of bigger than one. So that can't be the right answer. So I probably mix the two numbers up. So that's the kind of thinking I want you to be doing as you're doing this. That if you end up with a number that doesn't make sense, go back and see where you made the mistake. Because everybody makes mistakes. It's fixing those that will get you the marks. Okay, so here are two more questions. Pause the video, give them a go. So this question, question three, is designed to try to trick you a little bit. But you're all clever enough that it's not going to trick you. So each second, the house is losing 125 watts of heat through its use, through its roof. Now, think about this. Is this useful energy or wasted energy? That's right. This is wasted energy because it's losing that heat through its roof. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure your parents or people at home aren't paying to heat the sky. So the heaters in this house are producing 800 watts of heat. So this is the input energy. So this is the amount of energy going in. Have we been given our useful output? We haven't, but since we know how much is being wasted, we know how to figure out how much useful is energy if we know how much is being wasted. So our first step is to say our useful is equal to our input energy subtract our wasted energy because that's how much energy is being used. So our input energy is 800 joules or 800 watts, sorry, subtract 125 watts. So we plug those into our calculator and we end up with 675 watts of useful energy. So that's the, what we have to plug into our equation. Our equation being efficiency is equal to, now I often get these mixed up, but I stop and think about it for a second. Oh, we start with the smaller number because we want to end up with a number less than one. So our useful energy divided by our input. So our efficiency is equal to, our useful energy is 675 watts divided by 800 watts. So our efficiency is equal to 675 divided by 800 is equal to not 0.84375, which we need to round to not 0.84. So we know, and I look at that, yes, that is less than one, so I've put these the right way around. Because I will be honest with you, I do sometimes mix those up, or I often mix those up. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just double checking. Nope, all right, number less than one, we're okay. So a motor with power output of three kilowatts, can we do anything in kilowatts? <coughs> no, we can't do anything in kilowatts, so we need to transfer it into the SI unit 
the SI unit being watts. So to, so to go from kilowatts to watts, we have to multiply by, that's right, 1,000. So this is 3,000 watts. So a power output. So we have an output of 3,000 watts. And the input is 4 kilowatts, which is 4,000 watts. What is the efficiency is what we don't know. So we start with writing down our equation. Efficiency is equal to useful energy divided by inputs. So we have our useful energy or useful, in this case, our useful power. So our useful power is 3,000 divided by 4,000. So we end up with efficiency is equal to 0.75 or 75%. The steps don't change, only the numbers do. So here we go into rearranging the efficiency equation. So these equations are very easy to rearrange because it's simply multiplying or dividing. So again, you can do it. There's two ways you can do it. You can rearrange the equation before you, before you put the numbers in or after the numbers in. It doesn't really matter, but I'd like, I'd like you to give a go to these two questions here. So steps don't change, only the numbers do. Step one, what do we know? Efficiency of 0.4, how much useful output energy, that's what we don't know, input is 100 joules. So our equation, efficiency, is equal to useful output divided by inputs. So our efficiency, we have 0.4 is equal to, we don't know our output, divided by our input, 100. So in order to do this, I'm going to rearrange this here just a little bit. So we have our output divided by our input divided by 100. So this one's very easy to change. So we can see to get output by itself, we just have to multiply each side by 100. Because we're dividing by 100, so we just need to multiply by 100. So our output is equal to 0.4 times 100, which is equal to 400, this time we do need a unit, 400 joules, Good because no units, no marks. So here's another one, 50% efficient motor. So here we have an efficiency of 50%. Now it is easier to work with numbers that are not percentages. So I'm going to change this right away to not 0.5. So 30 kilojoules. We can't work with kilojoules, we need to work with joules, so we go to 30,000 joules. How much useful energy, so this is our supplied with, so this is our input, how much useful energy is transferred, so we need to know the output. So first step, write down the equation. Efficiency is equal to output divided by input. So we have our efficiency, not 0.5, 
is equal to, we have our output, which we don't know, divided by 30,000. Again, we multiply that across and we end up with our output is equal to 30,000 times 0 0.5, 15,000 joules, or we could say 15 kilojoules. If you're struggling with this, make sure you do email your teacher and they can give you some extra work to do with that. So, here we have a table. I would like you to work your way through this table using all the space you need. So we need our waste energy. Remember, our waste energy is just our energy supply subtracted by our useful energy. And then the efficiency, which is our useful energy divided by our energy supplied. So fill out any bits that are missing from this table. I'd like you to copy this table completely into your books. And then we'll come back for the answers in a minute. There are your correct answers. Pause the video, make sure you have them all down, and then we'll move on. So sometimes we wanna make sure that we increase our efficiency because we don't want wasted energy. We want as little wasted energy as we can. So in, to increase the efficiency of any energy transfer, the wasted energy loss must be reduced. So there's a lot of different ways, and we talked about them actually last, last lesson, especially if you think about how that wasted energy is being created. So as we said last lesson, most wasted energy transfers are due to dissipating into the thermal store of the surroundings. So most of that wasted energy is lost by heat. So if we can reduce the amount of heat that's being produced, then we'll lose less energy and we will improve our efficiency. So we can use materials which have a lower thermal conductivity. So we could use a kettle made from plastic instead of one made from metal, because we know plastic has a lower thermal conductivity. It lets less heat through. We can reduce friction by lubrication. So for this one, it's essentially insulation. Here as well, including using thermal insulation. So there's another way we could do it. And if you think about, again, the difference between a race car and a Range Rover, we can reduce drag by improving aerodynamics. So if you can't remember what that means, think of a race car versus a Range Rover. So I'd like you in your books to write down one example for each of these that you can think of or even looking around you, what's one, one example of each of these things? So the example of the using materials which have a lower thermal conductivity, a kettle made from plastic instead of metal. Another one is a window frame made from plastic in instead of metal or wood instead of metal. All right, lots of other things like that. So reducing friction, using lubrication. This is something like the oiling something, like oiling the oil in an engine or even oiling a hinge or just making something out of a more slippery material. Reducing drag, so something like an airplane, designing an airplane so that it reduces drag, your race car versus your Range Rover. If you can even think of two different cars, one that's more streamlined than the other, that's perfect. And using thermal insulation, there's lots of different examples where there's insulation being added to different things. Okay, so how can the efficiency of a system 
be increased. So writing the answer to this question down in your book. So hopefully you have something written down for this question. So what, what I want you to think about, how can the efficiency of a system be increased? I want you to have any of these four, any of these four topics can go into this box. We can use materials that have a lower th um, thermal conductivity. We can reduce friction by lubrication. We can reduce drag or we can use thermal insulation. So now that we've finished that lesson, I want you to give this final knowledge check a, a try and, we'll, and that will be the end of the lesson. So here are the answers for this knowledge, last knowledge check of the lesson. These last two questions, 11 and 12, come from your biology topic, which you'll be moving on to once you're done this energy topic again. So remember, reactants are the before of a reaction. So photosynthesis, we start with water and carbon dioxide, or H2O and CO2. And then see the products are the after effects, which are oxygen and glucose. Glucose having the um, formula of C6H12O6. Any other questions about that? Make sure you email your teacher about that or ask your teacher. Remember, don't forget to do any follow-up tasks, whether that be an educate quiz or any other quiz that your teacher has set for you. And until next time, 